And you know, it's okay. You know what you say in heaven time when you speak in English. It don't matter. Do, do, do what you gotta do. It says, it's not about how gifted or anointed you are. The purpose of praying in the Holy Ghost is to build ourselves up. It increases our faith and builds up our spirit. That is what separates those that divide with their words. Uh, their words come from a hurt place and they hurt others. But our words come from a holy place and they build us up. Y'all better hear me. Tongues are important. Somebody say tongues are important. They're like a spiritual jump start, y'all. Uh, tongues are so important that Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 14 and 39, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. That's what Paul said. Don't forbid nobody from speaking in tongues, because as often as you can, you need to pray in the Spirit. We say it, we give God our requests, we give God our problems, but we don't pray in the spirit. But I'm going to tell y'all this, this is important. Whenever Sister Tina or any minister comes up here to pray, we, she prayed over the mic. If you are spiritual, if you are saved, you should be praying in the spirit. We got somebody going up off the mic, but all of us inside of here should be praying in the spirit to build ourselves up so we can get ready to praise God. And that's the reason we can sit through praise service and not even move. That's the reason we can sit in praise service as they bump on the law. Because we have not built ourselves up to be ready to praise God. We come inside of here and it's so much about us, it's not about God, that we're not built up in the spirit, we're only built up in the flesh. And whatever's strong are going to win. Whatever is stronger is going to win. If the flesh is stronger, the flesh is going to win. If the spirit is stronger, the spirit is going to win. Oh, I better hear you. I don't know about you, but, all I, but, I, but with all of my faith and with what God has called me to, I need to be built up as much as possible. Somebody said we need to be edified. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4 says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue uh, edifies himself. He that prophesies edifies the church. We have devalued the uh, speaking in tongues because it has been abused and misused so much. So now we say, well, I don't speak in tongues. I don't do this. Because we see people abuse it, don't we? We see people misuse it for the wrong thing. But Paul never said, don't speak in tongues. In fact, he said, don't forbid them to speak in tongues. He said he just wanted to make sure that we spoke more at home, y'all better hear this, than, than we do in front of people. Y'all heard me? That, that when we begin to pray at home, you should be praying in the spirit. Amen. When you are praying out there in the audience, you should be praying in the spirit. You ain't got to get behind this mic and show somebody how good you can speak in tongues. You should be speaking in tongues and begin to build, 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 build the service up and build yourself up out in the audience and build yourself up at the house. Right. It is not supposed to be a spectator's gift. I'm preaching in the house. It's not a spectator's gift, God. It's not about showing how big and how bad I am. That's about me. I'm going to preach this in a little bit. He said, when you're behind the mic, your job is to speak and prophesy what can be understood. But we pray in the spirit because when we sit down, when we get through ministry, when we get through being poured out in ministry work, you need to be edified so you can be used once again. The Greek word for edified means to build up. The more we pray in the spirit and we are edified in the spirit, the less we will stay in the flesh. Oh, I began to start praying the Spirit just last night. It shifts the atmosphere, doesn't it? It changes our mindset. It changes what we are. So we be preaching on, we be praying on people sometimes. Lord bless them. God convict their heart. Lord let them move. Let them see the hair of their way. God do something inside their life. And we preaching on everybody else. But when you begin to speak in tongues, oh, y'all better hear this. God said, no, I'm going to work on you. You need to get right. You need to be better. If you begin a model for them, be an ambassador, be an example, they'll see what's right. You know, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here. Praying in the spirit is self edification It is me time. It is time for me to charge and a chance for me to charge. We, we, we recharge in God. We all need edification because so much of our life, so much we do in life, is about others. Uh, we work to provide for our loved ones. We take care of our people. We serve in our community and we serve in our church. And the more that we do this, the more virtue we lose. We think the only person to lose virtue is the pastor. He looked up praying for folks. Y'all make sure y'all cover him. He needs to, some virtue. He it came out of him. Guess what? When you at your job and you living for God and speaking the word of God to your job, you got virtue coming out of you too. When you are praying and fasting and believing God for somebody, you got virtue coming out of you too. Anytime you do something on God, you're going to lose some oil. 
if you don't believe it, even Jesus lost some more. The Bible said when a woman with the issue of blood grabbed the hem of his garment, he immediately felt it. He didn't feel it in his spirit. He felt it in his body. Oh, he said, I, I lost something because she, she, she began to pull some things out of me. And if Jesus had to go to the mountains, y'all better hear this, to be recharged, how much more of us? Oh, y'all better hear this. And the more we do, the more virtue we lose. We take on other people's problems sometimes. And we bear the afflictions of others in our spirit. Sometimes it's not about us doing something wrong, but we worry about people sometimes. I know the Bible said we shouldn't worry, but the Bible wouldn't tell us not to worry unless we worry. Because sometimes we worry, don't we? It's a level you got to get through to the point where you stop worrying. But guess what? Sometimes we worry. I'm just being honest with you inside of here. There's a the time when my, my, my mom got sick, I was worried. Now I repented because the Bible said don't worry about things, but I was worried. But the more I began to speak in tongues, God said, I got this. I, I'm going to keep her in perfect peace. Even if I take her, she's just going to sleep. I'm just going to hit her right there and be with me. I, 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 I begin to start reevaluating things because God said, you think when you worry, you're thinking fleshly. But when you begin to go to a spiritual side, oh, y'all better hear me. I make everything come into perspective for you. Uh, so, so this is what we do. We bear those afflictions. And that's why God gave us tongues. Tongues provide edification. And edification is spiritual repair. Somebody say spiritual repair. And the reason why we have so many bad thoughts and so much hurt in our spirit is because we've gone too long without being repaired. You keep on trying to work in the spirit and work inside a church and being saved and you're never connected to the, 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 to, to, to the recharging system. I got a car, that truck right now that they've been sitting up for months. If you turn that key, nothing wrong with that truck, that, that truck, but because it's not been turned on in a long time, the battery will not work. Nothing wrong with the truck. Nobody bothers the truck. But if you begin to turn the key, because they've been sitting up so long, y'all better hear me. Because they've been sitting up so long, it will not work. We all need to be recharged. And God is not stupid. He knew that this world has a way of wearing on us. Just living life has a way of wearing on us. He threw the situations and people can wear down our spirit. That's why he sent a comforter that will build us up when we need repair. Praying in the spirit helps you to keep things in perspective and not to take things too seriously. I'm going to preach this and this is what we need in the church. I Man, if you want to holler and run around church sermons, we need this. God told me to tell the people, God, stop taking yourself so seriously. My son loved to say this. Why so serious? I love that from the Batman movie. We, we, we take ourselves so serious sometimes. Give me tell you something. I had to learn this for myself. Everybody that picks with you is not a hater. They're not jealous of you. Stop thinking about, about that every time somebody picks with you. Everybody ain't hating on you. Everybody ain't jealous of you. You are not that big. You're not that good. Can I be real? I can drop the mic on that one. Some of us ain't got nothing. We ain't doing all or nothing. And somebody say one thing about us, we think they hate we think that they hating on us, they jealous of us. It ain't always that. Sometimes they're just picking with you. You know, I had to learn that my, my wife, you know, my, my, my family, we pick a lot. You know, my brothers, my big brother Quincy, my, my uh, the Lord knows my reason pick. And they pick and they pick. I'm just sitting there smiling. But watch say, why couldn't you take it? I said, baby, they just picking with me. They ain't trying to hurt me. You know what, they're picking with me because they say sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm the kid, the break the spirit, I break the atmosphere with this, break the, uh, the, the tension. You know, I am persnickety sometimes. Look at that word again, James. Persnickety. I like to have, when I go, when I like to wash it, I like to bathe. I want to make sure I'm smelling good, looking good, all that stuff. So whenever we talk about going to the woods and going camping, I say, that's not for me. And then people with me, they say, they need his lotions. He need his certain uh, soaps and all this stuff. And they'll pick with me, but guess what? That don't mean they hate me. I don't mean they got a problem with me. It's just picking. But if I get to a point where every little thing bothers me, I'm in the flesh. And yeah, I say that for some of y'all. Because sometimes out of the church, we get phone, I get phone calls and stuff. I said, man, they were just picking. It's not a big deal. Let it go. You should be fighting a stronghold. You said you're going against principalities, rulers of powers, of rulers of darkness in high places. And you can't deal with this kind of stuff? We become kindergarten class people inside there saying, he looking at me. <laughs> we, 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 he looking at me. She, she didn't speak to me this Sunday. Maybe she didn't see you this Sunday. And we've been preaching about this in Bible study. Maybe they want to speak to a visitor and not you this Sunday. Because nobody's speaking to the visitor. 
But when we stay in the flesh, we begin to major in the flesh, don't we? When we stay in it, we begin to do this. Well, you need to get to a point, have enough spiritual edification to let some stuff go. Because if the flesh is, the, is dominant, then you will be led by it, and you will react according to what it wants. But when, uh, when we, the, the spirit is edified, the flesh has to take a back seat. I don't want to be edified in my flesh. I need to be edified in my spirit. You see, the enemy thought that he could beat me, but when I went on my knees and prayed the spirit, that's when what was destroyed, it was built back up. So when I go through things and I'm built beat down in my spirit, I need to edify myself. And so I don't speak to impression. I, I don't speak to, to prove who I am to anybody. I, I don't speak in tongues because everybody is doing it now. Everybody's speaking in tongues now. No matter what church you go to, you go speak in tongues now. I, I pray in the spirit because I need to be built up. So that I can be all that God is calling me to be. So today, I'm through with it. Y'all can believe that way past time. I can more. I say, yeah, I can believe that. Uh, so today, God says, we need to go back to the spirit. Some of us are saying, well, how can you speak until I feel like I'm moved, I'm impressed by God? No, no, no. Bible says we can do that. That's your tool. So if we stand, this is, this is for my saved people. I don't want you to raise your hand, but I want you to think about it. Was I talking to you? Do, 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 do you say, Lord, I've been going and moving and going and going. I've not been recharged in a long time. I've not been recharged. And, and, and yes, I'm doing ministry work and I'm looking at things. And, and guess what? Sometimes just by working with people, you're going to feel a certain way about people. You've been, you've been around somebody long enough, you're going to have some issues with them. I don't care. Man, your best friend, you around them long enough, you're going to have some issues with them. So why don't we think we don't have issues with people inside church sometimes? How, how sometimes we never have issues with people at work sometimes? They got a place inside of our lives. But before it goes to a point, y'all ready to hear me? Before it goes to a point, well, Lord, some things come out of my mouth that should not come out of my mouth. Lord, let me begin to pray in the spirit. And I didn't want to put this scripture up there because it's so redundant because we've been preaching on it a lot lately. That when we speak, we don't know what we should be praying for. But the Spirit begins to intercede for us. That God, I wish I could put into words what's going on in my life. God said, no, I got you. I got you. The Spirit began to intercede for us. And it began to say things that we need to say that we don't know how to say. Something that we refuse to say. So what I want to do, I want everybody to lift your hands inside the house of God. Come on, as loud as you can, other sounds. And just for about three minutes, I want you to pray in the spirit. I want you to be recharged today in Jesus' name. As loud as you can go, in the sin. No, I want you to be recharged. This is your time. You give so much of yourself to your family, to your job. This is your time. God begin to recharge me in Jesus' name. Will somebody cry out? In Jesus' name, God, recharge. Fill me up, God, in Jesus' name. Do a work inside my life in Jesus' name. Recharge. It's me time. It's your time. It's your time. God wants to deal with you. He wants to deal with you. He's worried about you. In Jesus' name, he's worried about you. Be concerned with what's going on inside of your life. Begin to speak to him in Jesus' name. Oh, he's worried about you. I died for you. I died for you. You're special to me. Oh, you need to recharge in Jesus' name. 